general consensus on Ryzen 7000, these are some incredible chips that are bringing massive gains, like 20 to 30% improvements over their last gen counterparts in gaming and productivity. The 7950X is undoubtedly the fastest mainstream CPU available and dominates everyone in productivity tasks, but the expense of the platform is a real issue. Is this is this AMD I'm talking about? Yeah, that's weird, or right? Or is this Intel? You don't you it's, don't think like insanely the so my understanding is yeah, the boards are like five hundred dollars each. Yep. That's crazy. That we are seeing prices that are lower now. That, that was good. just right at launch. We're seeing as low as two hundred and fifty bucks for an ASRock X670 PG X670 E PG Lightning. But AM5 only supports DDR5, which remains twice as expensive per gig as comparable DDR4. And the other issue, as we outlined in our review, is that AMD's own Ryzen 7 5800X 3D has gaming performance that matches that of the new 7700X and only lags behind the Ryzen 9s by like a couple of percent on average. So for gamers, the upgrade to AM5 is currently not looking like a great value, especially because AM4 boards and chips are cheap and cheerful. And here's the thing. You can look at AM4 and you can go, well, there's no upgrade path. And that's nice, but not everybody can actually afford the latest generation yeah, version I, of the AM4 platform. I have never been super sold on, on board upgrade paths. What if you are buying a Ryzen 2000 today because you want to like get a deal, okay? AM4 for you has an upgrade path. A couple years from now, three years from now, boom. You go Ryzen 5000 with that same board, you just got a big upgrade and probably for cheap. Yeah. Right? So Fair enough. you got to think, not everybody is thinking in terms of brand new today. Yeah. Um, and, and especially these days, we're like, okay, the performance jumps we're seeing on some of the hardware that's coming out is immense. Like actually just huge. Yeah. But the performance that people need at the same time to reach like competitive frame rates and stuff is not huge and it's not increasing at anywhere near the same rate so the gap between people's computer upgrades is getting like bigger and bigger and bigger as far as i can tell so you don't necessarily need to upgrade your cpu within generation every single time but you definitely don't want to upgrade at all if the motherboard's minimum cost is 500 dollars, which again it's gone down but still that's really intense um when we looked at productivity, the 7600X and 7700X were another issue. They don't really offer compelling performance over Intel's 12th gen mainstream chips, although their higher core counts, uh, oh, though the higher core counts on the 7900X and 7950X allow them to run away with the productivity crown. But that's an issue. Has AMD done it again? Have they gone from the expensive brand that's not really competitive in the mid range and low end? There have also been concerns expressed Hopefully by the not. community around how hot these chips get. They will often yeah. run at 95 degrees on the hottest core before dialing back, but AMD says that this is by design. And if you want, you can target 115 degrees with an overclock before throttling and hard crashes will happen. So far, we've been un unable to get any of our chips to run hotter than 105, and we're not sure why. My current computer like heats my house. I don't, I don't need more of that. Well, here's the thing. How hot the die is in like degrees Celsius is not indicative of how much heat yeah, it outputs. Enough. You could have a router that has its CPU <laughs> running at 100 degrees. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not outputting a lot of heat. The thermals are just not being properly managed. Yeah. You could have a 300 watt chip oh, yeah. that is running at 70 degrees with liquid cooling on it, and it is still kicking 300 watts into your room. It's just not running hot, if you guys kind of understand what I mean. Conservation of energy, all right? It doesn't matter what temperature it's at. It matters how much actual uh, power energy. it is consuming and therefore thermal energy it is outputting in terms of maintaining room temperatures. Yeah. What were you going to say? Uh, Der Bauer did some stuff with that as well. Is that in here? Yeah, he he delitted de the 7900X and dropped like I think it's I think it was like 20 degrees yep. or something. 
Yeah. So there is some speculation that AMD may have sacrificed thermal performance to maintain cooler compatibility with AM4 coolers, in which case, good guy AMD, but I haven't seen any confirmation of that. Um, What we didn't touch on in our review, hmm, performance scaling with RAM speeds, so we'll have to follow that up. I was going to say, that um, was kind of interesting to me and immediately made me think like, okay, there's going to be another video. Eco mode, uh, a lower power consumption mode for the CPU and manual overclocking. Now, in the same week, actually the next day, Intel didn't launch, but announced their 13th gen processors uh, with most of the details really being around the flagship 13900K, 5.8 gigahertz turbo, 24 cores. Now, 16 of those are efficiency or E cores, and only eight of them are their performance cores, but 24 cores, and their E cores aren't that slow. They're like Skylake level. Like they're not, they're not bad. And five hundred and eighty nine dollars. Hmm. Hmm. Uh, the presentation was kind of fun. Twenty four percent performance improvement in games. In some games, one game. Is it League of Legends? I think it was League of Legends. I didn't know it was one. It was game. like League of Legends or Dota. Or I something thought it was like gonna that. be like two or three at least. Thirty four percent faster in game development. Blender UE five. Uh, the Core i5 and Core i7 see similar but lesser improvements to speed, cache size, and core count. And the real winner is efficiency gains. Okay, Intel alleges that at 65 watts, the 13900K, so they also, I guess, might have like a similar eco mode, uh, performs on par with the 12900K at 241 watts in a multi-threaded workload. That's a quarter of the power consumption if that holds true. The big one, though, is that Intel is going to have the affordable platform. Yeah. You can pick up a 13th gen chip, a Z690 board, rather than 790, because 790 only acts, adds some more gen 4 lanes and USB bandwidth. So you can get a last gen board or a B660 board, doesn't matter, as long as it's got a good enough VRM. You get some DDR4 memory, you throw this 13th gen chip on there, and to be clear, we are going to check this out for you guys. We're going to make sure that with DDR4, it actually performs well. Um, And you're going to be able, you're going to have like a latest gen platform for literally hundreds of dollars less. I don't necessarily AMD. think the motherboard thing is going to stay the same though. If we've already seen the availability pop up with boards that are half the price of what we were originally talking about. No. Okay. So no, AMD's boards will come down. The boards will come down, but they haven't launched their budget chipset yet. And for 13th gen, neither has Intel. But because you're able to use a last gen board and all you're missing out on is some PCIe lanes on the on the South Bridge, I don't know what they call it anymore, but whatever, the motherboard chips, the IO hub, because you're just missing out on some PCIe lanes and USB ports for gamers, you're not giving up anything. You go for your last gen board with the cheapo mainstream chipset. You put your latest gen chip, you put your last gen memory. That's another thing. DDR5. Yeah, it's going to come down in price, but it sure as heck isn't today. Yeah. And you might be building a system today. Now, this is the kind of competition I love to see because it's going to be back and forth. For 14th gen, right? Intel's probably going to do their thing where uh, a socket, socket compatibility is only maintained for two generations. So it'll be a whole new platform with whole new expensive boards, right? Meanwhile, AMD is going to have budget like B760 or I, I forget what their what their budget boards are going to be called for this new platform. Six something? Anyway, whatever. They're going to have new boards. DDR5 might be closer to price parity by that point. And AMD is all of a sudden going to look like the good bet. I, I, but I love it. It's back and forth. It's 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 punches. And, you know, I, I just, ah, I love seeing them duke it out. I love, okay, a lot of people say they want competition but they don't really want competition. They want someone to make a product that's like good enough to keep the brand that they like honest. And they're just gonna buy that brand no matter what that other company comes out with. But this is true competition. This is, this is two real options. Yeah, that's cool. Not just something that's like good enough that the, the monopolist can't price it at whatever they want. I'm a, I'm stoked. I think the brand wars are going to cook up because of that. Because for the last little while, it's just been like buy AMD, buy AMD, buy AMD. Mm -hmm. But now that there's hopefully good arguments both ways, depending on like specifically what you're doing and all that kind of stuff, it should make things a little bit more interesting. And I mean, you've got mid-cycle refreshes, man. Mid-cycle refreshes are a thing now. AMD's already talking about adding 3DV cache. 
Intel already teased a KS version of this chip at over 5 gigahertz, or 6, rather. Uh, yeah. It's exciting. It's exciting. Yeah, yeah it's good.